Hello and welcome to GMBN Tech. Today I have my mountain bike in the work stand and we're gonna go creek hunting to track down any unwanted noises and help ensure your bike runs silent. So what causes unwanted creaks and noises? Well, it can be a combination of factors. There are things like accumulated dirt, worn parts, or even bolts not being done up to torque. Now there are definitely problem areas that seem to rear their ugly head more than others. Things like creaks coming from the front of the bike, particularly in the headset. Also factors like the bottom bracket, the linkage of the bike around the saddle rails, and of course our drivetrains. Now one of the main problem areas with our drivetrains is actually going further back and looking at the interface between the free hub body and the cassette. That's not even getting in to the rear hub itself. So we're gonna go over a few options today of how to ensure your bike is running as quiet as possible because a quiet bike tends to be a happy bike. Now, if you're struggling to locate exactly where the noise is coming from, I'm gonna give this bike a full once over. Now, actually, I ride this bike a lot and I haven't had all the bits apart in quite a while, although it is running pretty quiet, but I think it should be a fair representation of the kind of things you'd find at home. So in the headset, the reason it can cause noises and that cracking, creaking sound can often be because there's granules of dirt that are trapped between two interfaces that's just getting crushed over and over again, and it can cause a bloody racket. So we're gonna take apart this headset clean it all down and give it some fresh grease. Another area of course is the bottom bracket. Now this, similar to the headset, can be a place to entrap dirt and grime. So we wanna be really careful the way we lubricate it because if you're applying excess grease, it's only gonna attract dirt. So a good tip is actually putting the grease on the inside of the bearing race and then pushing the axle through as opposed to putting it on the axle because then the bearing, the internal race of the bearing will actually drive all that grease and leave it just pressed against the crank arm, which is only gonna attract dirt. Now on this bike, I have a direct mount chainring, which one of the benefits is they tend to run pretty quiet indeed. However, if you have one with chainring bolts, it can be definitely worth making sure they are torqued up to spec and also maybe even include a drop of thread lock. Now, something like a retaining compound actually serves two purposes. Yes, it does stop things wobbling loose, but it also provides much needed lubrication to the threads. What can happen when there's a lot of friction being generated by the threads is that although something feels tight, you're actually feeling a large amount of resistance from the threads themselves and not actually torque at the head of the bolt. So something like thread lock, much like grease, can actually aid installation. Pedals can also give us creaks. So what you need to do if you can is take off the pedal body, which is actually often a bit simpler than you think it's gonna be, and apply a fresh coat of grease. Now, a warning here, it can be very tempting to pack your pedals with grease, especially if you're trying to remove play. Now, whilst this may work in the short term, once you get some heat through those pedals, i.e. by rotating them, it can lead to a sort of high pressure situation and, um, and a lot of grease pretty much everywhere. So a generous amount, but you don't wanna go packing it with grease. Moving towards the back of the bike, we get to the free hub. And as I mentioned earlier on, sometimes that interface can give us creaks and noises. Now this has definitely become more of a common issue since we moved away from the standard free hub body onto the 11 and 12 speed. SRAM and Shimano systems. So your XD and Microspline free hub bodies do, in my experience, like just a little bit of grease, just a thin layer to remove any creaks. Also, when it comes to our drive trains, you can get squeaking and creaking chains. Now, if this is something you suffer from, it's normally down to lubrication. So maybe dry lube with that particular chain in your environment just isn't gonna cut it. But what if you want to run your chain nice and clean? What I would recommend doing is degreasing the chain, applying some wet lube, wiping off the excess, and then applying dry lube. That way, deep down in the chain, you do have you know, all the necessary parts are lubricated, but it means it's not gonna attract lots of dirt and grime that are just gonna cling to the wet lube 
as it's on the exterior. Now, obviously you should always wipe down your chain regardless of applying the second coat of lube, but after that wet lube, try and make sure there's almost nothing on the exterior. Also, some areas that can cause grief is in your rear hub. Now this is particularly prevalent if bearings are worn because they can develop a bit of side to side play as that inner race is rocking on the bearings themselves. It's also worth noting that if you have a wheel with angular bearings, then it could be very sensitive to preload indeed. It's similar to our bottom bracket. Applying a huge amount of preload isn't really doing the bearings any favors and preload is only there as a device to ensure the spacing is correct and they're not meant to be applying large amounts of pressure on the inner races of the bearings. Another problem area towards the back end of our bikes can be wheel bearings. Now this can be due to a number of factors. Either the part is worn, especially in seal bearings or cartridge bearings. If that inner race is moving across the bearings laterally, it's gonna cause quite a large amount of noise. But it's also worth noting that even if your bearings are fresh, it's really important that you apply preload correctly should your wheel use that sort of system. When you apply preload to something like a rear hub or even our cranks, we're not trying to pressurize the inner race and we're basically just taking up slack. You need to let the bearing work as it wants to. And as you can imagine, if you're bowing the inside of the bearings in through excess amounts of preload, it's not gonna do any favors to the bearing and it's only gonna exaggerate and increase wear. So be sensible when it comes to preload, not only for a quieter bike, but also to elongate the shelf life of your bearings. I would say the last part towards the back of our bikes that can give us grief is the clutch mechanism on our rear derailleur. Now, something like this SRAM system isn't actually a serviceable unit, but the Shimano ones are. Now, I don't have one on my bike to show you, but they are fairly easy to do. And you just few little bolts, pop it off, and away you go. Dropper posts in their current form often come with two bolts on the saddle clamp. And they do this because it basically allows for the most amount of adjustment to suit a wider range of riders and setups. However, there is of course two interfaces sliding on one another. And as we know from our bottom brackets and our headsets, this can contribute to unwanted noise. So we need to ensure that it's clean. Now, before you go taking your saddle off, it's also worth noting where your position is on the rails so you can achieve the same position again. It's also worth taking it apart quite carefully because all these pieces will want to go back in the same orientation. A nice clean out of any grit as well as some fresh lubrication for the bolts can really quieten down your bike. Sadly, one of the areas that I don't have a remedy for is any noises that are generated by that rail joining the body of the saddle itself. Now this can happen because you're saddle bouncing your way down the trail, intentionally or not, or through just wear and tear and general use. Now, because it's not really a serviceable part, it can be very annoying, but at least by servicing the seat clamp, you can isolate it and know where it's coming from. Now, the last part to talk about is the linkage systems on our full suspension bikes. Now, all these hardware and pivots will do their best work if they are cleaned and re-greased as well as being torqued to spec. Now it can often be tempting to try and eke extra life out of worn components and bearings. In my experience, it just isn't worth it. And a bearing or bush is either good or it's not. It's either worn or it's not. Trying to extend the life often doesn't really go to plan. And it just means that your bike fails out in the middle of nowhere as opposed so taking it to the bike shop or doing it yourself and popping some new bearings in there. If you do want to extend the life of your bearings as far as possible, it's really important to remember that some of these bearings actually have quite a limited range of movement, especially in the mid stroke. So what you can do is just disconnect your shock and cycle the whole linkage through its travel. This will basically make sure all the bearings get into some grease, stay lubricated and will in turn last longer. Now, that is me going creek hunting on my mountain bike. There are, of course, other places I have undoubtedly missed. And I'm sure you guys at home have had some weird and wonderful creeks that maybe you found, maybe you haven't. But get in the comments, what was the most annoying creek you've ever had on your bike? And did you fix it? Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Cheers, guys.